Hey, welcome back everyone. Rob here from Ramp Studio Comics. In today's video, I just want to give you a glimpse into a digital painting I'm working on. This is still very rough, obviously. Uh, so, you know, forgive any inconsistencies, overly saturated colors. Uh, I kind of fix all that at the end. And sometimes I don't fix it at all because I just tend to like overly saturated colors. I don't know what my deal is. But at any rate, I want to show you some of the painting process. So recently I've made this little doodad and you can get this off my DeviantArt. Uh, I need to put it on my website as well, but I'm starting to make more step-by-step -step, uh, tutorial lessons so that, you know, for the people that don't just uh, identify with the videos that we have here on YouTube, maybe they find those helpful. So a little bit of everything. Here's a little monster dude I'm working on. Figured I'd show you that creepy little thing. And, uh, but yeah, so I'm, I'm working on this warrior type dude, a little dwarven kind of character. And I figured I would show you the step-by-step -step process of at least the sword. So I've already kind of blocked it in, and I'll show you what I've got here. So just kind of my process for implementing some digital paint here on Clip Studio or Manga Studio 5. So what I do is first rough sketching. And you see it's a really bad sketch, just very loose. And then I drop in a flat layer that I uh, actually draw in with the G-Pen. So right there, G-Pen, I just I get a nice line with that. I've got lock transparency set, so I can't draw outside of there. But I get a nice line like that. I draw the perimeter shape, and I worry about just the, the cleanliness of the outside of the line. Uh, you can do ins or inside or outside, but you just have to make sure that whatever side you flood fill, that's the clean area that you want. So in this case, I made sure that the outside of my line was nice and clean, flood filled it with gold or you know light yellowish brown gold color, and then lock transparency. Uh, so now what I do is I start to grab whatever brush. In this case, I like to block in something. I actually use my darker pencil brush. And I take that and I'll set it to, let's see, I've got you know 52 on the opacity. And I just kind of brush in some shadows like this. So I just want to give you an idea of what I've already done. Then I'll switch to a smudge brush or blend brush and I'll vary up the size with the bracket keys, and I'll just blend some of this in. Now, since it's locked, I'm not gonna go outside of the uh, confinements of the edge, and I can define uh, plane changes. So I do this even with like, you know, that's how I worked up to the, the uh, face there, and I'm not completely done with that. You see it looks unfinished. But every aspect of the painting, this is really kind of the process I take. I'll start with a, a dark and a light, and I'll define my plane changes or my uh, rounded edges, whatever it might be. In this case, it's a it's a sword, so I want there to be a significant um, edge to some of these areas and definable plane changes. I can also drop out my um, pencils from the background so it's not too confusing. Let me find those. And had I labeled these properly, it'd be a bit easier to see, but I never do. Okay, so there's the pencils outside the back, and I just basically cut his hand off. That's horrible. Okay, so yeah, so I'll blend this in, or around, and I'm just being careful not to really hit the edge too much because that is a drawn-in line. So I, I actually bring the line work in front of the artwork, and that's this one right here, and then I redraw with a, a translucent brush. And that's just the way I like to do it. I see a lot of people will actually merge the pencils in and that's not a bad approach either you just gotta either way you really just gotta be careful to make sure you soften everything up uh, another quick way to do this is you can actually uh, do a Gaussian blur right over top of this but I don't like that for something like this because I'll show you what it's gonna do it's gonna probably soften up everything too much but you could at least go to the minimal value that you like use that and then continue to refine but I, I like doing it like this but that Gaussian blur effect works really well, uh, yeah, really well for things like the hair. That's how I did the beard and still working on the uh, mullet there. Or not mullet, but mohawk. <laughs> Maybe I'll have a mullet by the time I'm done. I don't know. Whatever comes to mind as I complete this crazy little dude. But notice, you know, I'll start from a distance and just kind of, you know, brush this all back and forth. And the main thing I want to kind of show you in this... Uh, you know, hopefully mini lesson, but these lessons always get to be a little bit lengthy by the time I get to any uh, degree of quality workmanship here. But uh, what I want to do is show you that I build up multiple um, 
texture. So I, I had somebody ask on my uh, Facebook, I had posted, I think it might have been this or a piece of this particular piece, a uh, piece of this piece. Anyways, and uh, they said, you know, I can't ever get my paints to look like that inside of that program. And, uh, you know, I didn't, I didn't get to see their work. I should have asked for a sample. Uh, but basically what generally that can be, uh, what I noticed uh, with my stuff in the beginning, and I still notice because I, I still got to get a lot better, but uh, is that you, if you don't build up multiple layers to everything, and I'm talking like every part of the painting, like the arm here has probably about five, six different layers, and I'll probably add some more by the end of it, and the rest has less, and you see it doesn't stand out as well. So like even this sword, I need to, there needs to be more than just, right now there's only a base color and a shadow. So let's go ahead and do this. I want to show you what I mean. I'm going to right click here. I'm going to go select from layer, create selection. Uh, remember if you're going to select a bunch of times uh, and you want it to be quicker and you don't want to have to do those few steps, you can shorten it by go selection, convert to selection layer. It's going to make it a weird green. Just take the visibility off and just by simply clicking that box, it'll redefine your selection. So pretty easy and you can stay right on this other layer. So you can hit command D to deselect, reselect, well, generally it doesn't bounce back and forth. I guess I'm a liar. Never mind. Uh, you do got to go back and forth. But it's a it's a little bit quicker process once you set it up. So, so what I want to do here is add some texture. So, let's say that this uh, thing has seen a lot of uh, battles. Let's go with Metal Scratches brush. This is one of my custom brushes that you can get from my custom brush set over on Gumroad. I'll make sure there's a link below. Bam. All right. Done. Okay. So, you know, we go over to here grab like a dark brown, maybe even a black. I guess we can grab a black for now because what I want to do is show you the texture effect. So I'm just going to throw in these scratches. You know, I'm going to kind of overdo it at first because you can always soft erase. So I'm going to put a lot of small ones. I'm going to scale this sucker up really big and just a couple little... Oh, there we go. Something like that. So, you know, again, it's overdone. I guess I want some on the bottom here. Let me... Move the brush size down again, something like that. And so it's been marred up, dinged up, you know, make sure to get some of this on the edge. You could go a step further. You could drop these in with a layer, distort them on the sides. I'm just gonna draw some of the, of the other ones in, but I just want you to be aware that brushes aren't gonna do all the work for you. You still wanna mix it up a bit. So then I'm gonna throw in these little dents and dings. It's another little custom brush there. You can make these pretty easily, so. If you don't want mine, just make your own. But basically, you want some noise. Uh, let's try a stipple brush. So without this, it's going to look pretty plain. So if we take this visibility, and I painted right on the sword. Oh, I didn't mean to do that, actually. Um, yeah, let's go back. Goodness. Way to go, Rob. And you know what? No, I'm just going to leave it. It's not that big of a deal. But I'm going to show you with another layer now, and I'm going to add uh, maybe just more of the noise pattern. So I'll knock this back a bit. So okay, so I did paint those on the existing layer. Not a big deal because as you get more comfortable painting, uh, you're going to do that anyways. But I want this to be a little bit more for a be beginner if you're new to this. So I'm going to go back and add a few of these. I'll use uh, the stipple brush again. And let's go ahead and bump up the particle size on these. So there's, again, some variation there. Because, you know, your texture needs to have some good variation. Uh, you could bump up the brush density. You can even play around with changing the colors a little bit. And you know, all these things kind of factor into making it a more interesting and kind of depthy texture. And the thing is, I think it's helpful to put more of this in at the beginning. And then you can wash it back, paint over it, and make it really look more believable. Uh, but now what we can do is we can adjust the blending mode to things like, you know, subtract, well not subtract, hold on. Uh, overlay maybe? Yeah, see, overlay is going to give it a little bit of a red in there. I don't know that I like that, but I just want you to be aware that when you add the the layer, you can now take advantage of the blending modes, and also you got a, a little bit more room to do things like I mentioned with the blur. So. Maybe you want some of the texture to be blurred and some not to be. Filter, blur, Gaussian blur. Okay, so now what's happened 
is this added texture is a little bit more washed down or, or you know it's kind of in the background of the other texture uh, that's what I look at when I blur things down and I'm basically you know bringing them forward if they're more apparent and washing them back or pushing them back into the painting if they're more blurred and you need that rich kind of combination of textures so now let's take the sword and let's go ahead and add uh, let's say it needs more tone but actually I want to bump back the hue saturation the the hue of or the saturation of it a bit like that and let's add another layer over top and let's just call this uh, I don't know sword soft shadows because that's the other thing you want a combination of soft and hard shadows so sword soft shadows so let's take this and I think I do want to go with the reddish I'm trying to make this look a little bit more golden so maybe a reddish brown and forgive me because I kind of suck at colors but I just keep messing around with it till I see something and go Eureka I got it finally after hours and hours of slaving away all right so let's just try this so I want a little bit of soft shadows there and I like to think about this like a global kind of thing so I'll pan back really far throw my line work back in there because it looks creepy without it so yeah go back where is it sword soft shadows remember you can group this stuff together and really uh not have it going so messy being so messy here okay so yeah so what i want to do is you know brush in some of this i'm going to bring out some of the highlights to the edge next but i'm just trying to paint this back so it's not so, you know, just look too widely lit. You know, it's not going to be that lit like that. So we'll push that back with some soft shadows. And then now I'll kind of paint on top of this. So again, I can play with the blending mode here if I want. Maybe set it to multiply. I kind of like that. And then I'll go on the top layer of this. And I'll add one more layer. And, and forgive me because, like I said, you really don't have to do this. You're a more advanced painter. You can do all this on the same layer. You're going to use your blending modes inside your brushes right here a bit more to aid you in the process, but you really can do it all in the same layer. Uh, sword, is that the new one I added? Sword details, basically. I'll just call it something other than. And, you know, let's just take this now. We got sword, like four layers going. Let's just add a group, grab these, throw them in there. Oh, don't double click it. Throw them in there, grab our selection for the sword, throw that in there. And then, you know, as you're working, it becomes a lot easier to just, you know, work inside this group. The other neat thing is everything you do to the um, the uh, folder edits the entire sword area. So it can be very um, beneficial because you can come over here and, you know, select something and shift it. And it'll shift everything else in this area. Um, I don't know why it's saying... Oh, there it goes. Yeah, so you can move it all around. You can literally crop and reselect. And it'll reselect and change even the selection. It's it's probably the most efficient grouping out of any software because most of them don't change the selection. This one does. So very cool there. Uh, get rid of that. Reselect that. And go back to the details. So now what I tend to do is after I've got enough of you know the global shadows, I want to start kind of sculpting this. And again, thinking about the... Um, the plane changes. So I'm going to grab a brighter light source, something that I would perceive on a gold. Now, again, I'm not the greatest with colors, so you're probably going to look at this and go, that's totally the wrong color, Rob. Uh, you know, what I would generally do is just pick from a, um, a golden uh, object, like get a photo of some old school gold armor or something like that, and then just pick some colors from it. So I'm just going to fake it for right now, since I didn't pull any reference. But you really should pull reference. But I just want to think about the plane changes. So I might get in the highest points first. And I'm basically just sculpting. So I'm thinking about high surfaces and let me rotate this. And where the uh, where the light might catch an edge. So for instance, maybe I want to make this edge look a little bit more, you know, in your face, impressive, whatever. I might hit some of the edges like this. Just little things like that. But again, I also want the plane change, so I want to hit this entire edge over here. And notice I'm just using um, 
you know, a pencil brush, you know, but what's neat about this pencil brush is you're, you're basically, uh, you know, with a translucent setting, you're basically able to block in a nice little uh, segment of paint pretty clean and then you can blend it back as needed. So, you know, maybe you don't want this whole edge to be in focus, so you blend some of that edge back just like that. We're not worrying about the underlying paint uh, because it's on a different layer. And I just want to slowly uh, build up some of these edges. So let's get over here and hit some of this. Something like that. You're going to you know, probably get shadows in here. So I'm just going to hit a little bit of light source in the middle. I'm going to perceive that this area is going to be shadowed. So I'll come back with that. But, you know, so maybe a little bit of light there, a little bit of edge lighting. Rim lighting, I think it's referred as. Something like that. Get that whole plane change up top here. Maybe we want to be fancy and we can add a little drop shadow from that bigger blade. So we got to really perceive where our light source is. And remember, you can use perspective to imagine or envision where your light source is. I'm not going to get into that. This video is already going to be lengthy. Just you, know, you can dab a little bit of extra paint in there and just blend it. See? Easy peasy. Lemon squeezy. I always say it to my kid. He, he thinks it's funny. Okay, so rotate, check the work, and just kind of repeat this process. Now, the other thing is, again, we did it with the layer, so we can say, well, what's add or add glow look like? Maybe it'll fix some of Rob's bad color theory because it's pretty bad. And, uh, you know, I kind of like that. It's probably too saturated and too punched up, but. That's kind of the way I roll, so that's uh, that's not bad. And then, again, I might do more of this, but now I have to keep in mind, this is probably the most, you know, intense area of light, so the rest is going to be more subdued. So I'll use that as my gauge, so as I add more of these plane changes, I'm just lightly going to work on that. But I also might come back in here and pick up some of these tiny little details as well. You know, I might make it even brighter over here. Pick up some of this on the side. Maybe there's a little bit of light catching some of these edges over here. You know, so on and so forth. Just remember that light's generally going to catch the one edge, the highest point, and then you want consistency. So whatever edge you pick, you have to kind of go through, pick your deepest uh, marks, I guess, but make sure you're all on that one side don't go back and forth on these marks and it's real easy to forget because it'll it'll hurt the uh the look of it it's, it's crazy our eyes are really insanely good at picking up when something's incorrect um well except for me when i'm doing my own work for some reason i seem to miss it but then somebody else will come on well that's wrong rob you uh you did that entirely wrong but yeah we're pretty good uh judges connoisseurs of art our eyes are just keenly aware of stuff that we don't, I don't know if we can ever even put our finger on it but we can tell that something's wrong okay so which brings me to my next point learn to trust your own eye easier said than done so yeah so I'll just keep doing this and keep sculpting it and I might overdo certain areas of this just because it looks cool you know I might over animate it I might break up some of the edges here just like this, so it's not so, you know, you gotta figure, this is a tattered up, you know, chunk of stone or whatever, uh, you know, probably magically enchanted, that's what I'm kind of thinking about anyways, that's why I put this jewel looking thing in the middle, I'm gonna have that light up in the design. Uh, so yeah, so, but notice that that blending mode helped out a lot. Now once you get it to a level and you're like, ah, it looks good, I don't, I don't wanna make any more changes, you can start merging this stuff all down, but. Uh, you know, just make sure to keep it for as long as you need to figure this out. And let's see, what else can we do to enrich this? So notice here I'm really, you know, I kind of applied too much of that. So I'm really pushing it around and softening up that effect because this is kind of the very bottom edge. Now I might want to go back and add some shadows. So let's see if I can take advantage of any of the layers that are existing or if I need to add one more. But I think... So I can probably add it to the soft shadow. Now nah, that might get confusing. I'll just add one more layer. So I'm a layer junkie. All right, sword, 
hard edge shadows. Let's put hard edge. And then I'll set that to multiply. And then I'll go back to this. Let me also show you the smooth watercolor brush. Just because this is really like one of my favorite brushes to paint with. Because you can uh, apply a shadow. Oh, that's too red. Oh, I got the wrong color here. That would be why. Alright, so you can apply a shadow. A hard edge shadow with pretty good... Uh, accuracy and you can blend at the same time so it's a very uh, versatile brush that's too dark though let me punch back the opacity eh, maybe not let's just go with it all right so yeah I want to get in some of these shadows in here so again you can kind of put full pressure down and then you can increase the brush size with the bracket keys and just blend back and forth. So it's a blender and a painter. Pretty cool. So yeah, this is this is still one of my favorite, well, I'll be honest, this is actually my favorite software to paint in still. Even though I love Procreate, it's fantastic and I've been getting better and better at painting in that. Uh, I mainly like that because of, you know, again, the portability that I always talk about with that one. but. Something about painting in this one is just so fantastic. It's got um, a really great feel to the paintwork. I, I enjoy painting in this more than Photoshop, and I came up painting in Photoshop. That's actually where I started digitally painting. So that just that says a lot for it. So yeah, we've got to admit, Clip Studio has got some great paint tools. Uh, but you know, keep in mind, you can make any of them work. They all do the same thing. You just have to figure out where the various tools are that make it work the way that you want. And sometimes you have to use little workarounds, but they all have like blending modes. Now they all support brushes with blending modes. It's, yeah, it's really just pick one and get used to it, but. So, okay, so there's that, you know, maybe some more shadow in here, but actually I'm gonna end up lighting up that, that stone. Uh, maybe I can show you that real quick and then we'll bring this one to a close because I can only imagine I gotta start setting a timer. I can only imagine where the video is at right now. Okay, so that gives us some more depth. So if we look at it um, before and after, you know, from from that line work, that really you know mucky line work, to that, and then you know you just keep repeating that process. So if you've got a better idea of how things look, then you know reference in that, then you're gonna do better. You're gonna keep chiseling this out, and bringing out more details more global light, more light and dark, whatever you want to do. But all the layers are here, it's ready to go. And then, you know, let's add the uh, the stone in there. Jewel, stone, whatever you want to call it. And let's pick a color, let's say, uh, I don't know. I really don't know. Whatever color it is, it's going to end up bouncing off the side of his face there. So let's just pick maybe a red, red stone, I don't know. Well, I'll show you something pretty neat that helps out with people like me that are bad at picking colors. Would blue look silly? Let's do it. Let's just do a blue. Okay, so I'm going to take the G pen. I'm going to flood fill this in. Okay. Kind of picturing that it's a little bit recessed in there. So you see like the side edges. I'm probably going to have to correct the perspective here. And I really could have just drew out a selection for a circle, so I don't know why I'm drawing a circle here, but hey, there's my circle. It's not a perfect circle. Okay, so there's that, lock transparency. Let's just immediately take a light source, drop it in there. It's gonna be all glossy and stuff, so we're gonna have like a little light over here, a couple little dots, whatever it is. And we want a shadow source. Let's do that with a soft brush. Multiply should work. Let's go ahead and make it look rounded like this and let's go ahead and take a highlight brush set to add glow with a brighter color and let's punch up the light source and make it look more rounded in the middle and we want this to look like it's glowing so I'm actually going to push that shadow back a lot and that thing is really distorted, but I just want to give you the quick uh, way it works. Let's add a new layer. Let's set it to normal mode now. I have a normal brush right there. Uh, probably same color. 
I'm just gonna paint around it like a glow like that stronger at the center and then fade it out and then this is over top of everything else so we're gonna use a blending mode to try to hopefully get the effect we're looking for add glow maybe You don't have it like maybe catch the edges or something. I still don't like that. Let's try add no glow dodge no. Hmm. Well, we might need to combine a couple effects, but let's go to add glow and. Let's make sure that it's really strong in the middle. And again, try to catch some of these edges. So sometimes you got to play with these effects to get them the way that you want. But uh, now, the other thing is if it doesn't come out exactly the way that you want, you can save this for the end and you can merge it all. So what I want to do, because it looks like it's just kind of sitting in there, floating or something, I'm going to add another layer in between these. And let's pick a gray. I just want it to look like there's a, uh, oh, let's see here, normal, might have to bring this up. I want it to look like there's a, um, a piece holding it in place. And again, I could have just created a shape for this, but I'm a glutton for punishment. And I can always go back and fix it. I kind of feel like I'm testing the, the waters right now anyways. So I'm just going to draw that in really poorly and see if I can make sense of this. Let's blend this around. Yeah, I'm not digging that. Hold on. Let's just fix this real quick. Or let's not fix it so quick and let's do it right. So I'm going to deselect this, grab a selection tool, hold shift, a little bit bigger, like that. Let's go ahead and fill this. Let's go a little bit darker. Actually, let's just go to almost black on this. Bring this forward, Command T, hold Shift, and actually Command Shift T because I need to distort this into place a bit. So I want the one side to be tighter than the other side. So it looks like there's some depth there. And then I'm going to lock transparency here. I'll grab that smooth watercolor, grab a brighter gray. And I want to try to paint in uh, the look of a ridge to this. And I'm going to select some of this brighter blue. Put that in there as well. And let me try brightening up the one side of the stone because I'm still not digging the uh, effect it's having. But this is where I just keep picking at it, you know, just keep maneuvering uh, until I get something I like. I think it might be. Yeah, the glow just is not coming across like a glow. Well, here, let me show you one more thing. So say you get enough of this in place and say you're, you know, I mean, from a distance, it looks a little better, but it still looks weird. It's not, 
I think it's really the shapes I need to adjust. So I'll go back and repaint that. But the other thing I want to show you is say you get enough of this in place, you can take this and call it, you know, sword finished or just sword, drag a copy of it. Uh, let's see, right click on here, merge layers. Whoops, not those, excuse me. I always do that. Come on, Rob, get with the program. Combine selected layer. All right, so now that whole sword is merged as a copy. I still have my backup as well. But the neat thing about doing it this way is now when you grab your uh, blending brush, you know, like I can grab like one of my effect brushes. Uh, let's see, where's one that does power effects? Pretty cool. I think it's called Power Tip right there. It's already set color dodge and all that. I can grab like, you know, one of these bright colors and I can do something over top. All it is, it's got a texture to it. But what it's going to do now is it's going to affect everything. So not just the centerpiece, it goes right over top of everything. And that's really the effect you want anyways because it's a glow. So you need it to look like it's emanating from there. So you could do the texture in the middle. Let me show you just with a soft brush too so you don't feel like you have to have that particular brush. But it's really just this color dodge. You can do it with a soft brush, set it to color dodge. Pick that blue again, even though I kind of want to add, let me add this darker blue. Let's try this. See how it's coloring like some of that gold is turning purple now? And that's really what you want. You want it to look like it's radiating and having an effect on these other areas. But my shapes are off, so I'll need to adjust that. But then I'll, I could come over to the side of the character. Where's the skin at right there? Make a copy since I don't know if this will be what I want, but I can lock transparency there. I can put a little bit of this color coming out, off into the side of his face. You know, and again, I would do this after the characters merged so that it affects. I can I can glance across the sides of this and I can get a little bit on the side of the face, some in the hair, definitely some on this uh, kind of sash looking thing. And that's really it. So you just keep adding those effects. Now, lastly, because I'm still looking at the sword and it just doesn't look as nice as it could, you got to remember that once you get your background in there, if there's going to be a background, you're going to take that sword copy. You're going to do the same very thing with whatever the scene lighting is. So let's say he's in a, you know, sunset kind of scene, something like that. You might take and add some of this over top of... Uh, let's try overlay over top of the edge. So you're going to bring some of that atmospheric color and lighting into the rest of the painting. And that's going to be the sword. And you're going to introduce that all throughout the character. And that's what's going to pull them together into the scene. So forgive me, the jewel didn't come out the way I hoped. I guess this would be a fail video. But, uh, but you know, I would keep messing with it. I would just take the sword area and just keep... Um, you know, maneuvering the existing paintwork. So I could probably try to take, let's try this. Let's take a selection. Let's go edit, transform, mesh transformation. And maybe I could distort some of this. I don't know. It's probably going to mess up the edges though. Yeah, I would just repaint it. So scratch that one. I would just grab this area and do it with the circles like I needed to. Fix the shape of the jewel that looks like a, I don't know, beat up donut hole or something, whatever those are called, donut, round donuts, little donut balls, you know, little things from Tim Hortons, little delicious things, you can get them with sprinkles, you know what I'm talking about. All right, anyways, thanks everybody for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Remember that you can get that tutorial sheet off my DeviantArt. Let me know what you think, what you'd like to see in the future. I'll make sure to get that on the schedule. As always, keep drawing, keep having fun, and I will talk to you soon.